What's up nerds? My name is Noah. Welcome to Table Ready. Today we are going to be answering the question, can you play Lasers and Feelings solo? Now for those of you who do know me from my other series, I want you to know that Reese's Adventure is coming to a close very soon. We are just a couple of edits away. It is bittersweet, but I promise it'll be amazing once it's done. And uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, why don't you go check it out? I play solo Dungeons and Dragons with ChatGPT as the DM, and we're gonna see if we can do something similar outside of the Dungeons and Dragons space and dip into lasers and feelings. For those of you who don't know what lasers and feelings is, it is probably one of the simpler uh, tabletop RPGs that you can play in that the rule set is one page. Uh, this is it. Like it's one page, you have character creation, you have the dice rules, and then you even have a way for the GM to create a story plot, and um, it is a very narrative heavy game. So I want to do a couple of things here today. First, I want to see, is it possible for us to play Lasers and Feelings with ChatGPT by ourselves? I'm not going to be too heavily invested in the character or anything, but I want to see if we can do it period. After that, I want to talk about the game system itself, kind of as we go as well. And then uh, I want to critique, uh, give like my pluses and minuses to lasers and feelings and see if we can't possibly improve it moving forward. All right, let's go. To start off, we're going to open up ChatGPT. I am going to use GPT-4 specifically because I want to see if I can use some of the plugins to make my life a little bit easier. Now, if you don't have ChatGPT-4, that's fine. Uh, we could probably figure out how to make 3.5 work. And if you take to the comments or hit me up on Patreon, then I can answer whatever questions you might have as to how to make that work. But for now, let's go into ChatGPT-4 because I want to use some of these plugins that are in beta right now. So first is Link Reader. The reason I want to use Link Reader is because I have this link that I can copy to all of the rules for Lasers and Feelings. Link Reader allows you to input uh, PDFs, uh, websites, all of that stuff, and it, it can reference that document as you're going through your text game. And the second is um, Keymate AI Search. It's just a browsing service, basically, a browsing plugin, because the browsing beta is offline right now. So this kind of allows me to skirt that process. So let's hop into our first prompt, which I already have prepared here. You are an expert in running the game of lasers and feelings. The rules can be found here. And then I just copied and pasted that same um, web page, which is a PDF with the rules. Let's see what GPT says. Okay, so you can see that it's using the link reader. Yeah, there we go. And it looks like it's spitting the rules back out at us, going into character creation. So it's able to read that whole document and give us back the way that the game is played. So if you're unfamiliar with the rules of lasers and feelings, this is basically how it goes. It's a standard narrative-based role-playing game. By narrative-based, I mean that it is not so deep into rules or um, tactics as much as it is storytelling. And this is reinforced by the single, well, it's more of a two-in-one type stat. Here, it says right here, choose a number two through five. Um, basically, a high number means that you're better at lasers. Lasers is anything tech-based, science-y, anything that's cool, calm, collected, and um, objective-based. And a lower number is feelings. So that's, you know... Any kind of charismatic, social type of ability. So when you pick your number, say you pick a 5, that means that on a 6-sided die, if you were to roll under a 5, you would succeed for something lasers. That would mean that you would have to roll above a 5 to succeed in something's feelings oriented. Let me give you another example. Let's say that you are a little more balanced and you were sitting at a three. That means if you rolled a four, five, or six, you would succeed on something feelings-based, but fail on something lasers-based. And if you rolled a one or a two, you would succeed on something lasers-based, but you would fail on something's feelings-based. 
what happens if you roll a three? Well, if you roll a three, then you get laser feelings. Laser feelings basically means that you get to ask the GM a question about your scenario. They'll give you an honest answer, and then you can decide whether or not you want to pivot uh, your, your action and change that action. And I think it also counts towards a success, unless, of course, you want to reroll all your dice and the next thing that you want to try to do. But moving forward, if you were to roll just one die, then you have a chance of succeeding, but really only in a minimal way, because you need to actually try to accrue as many six-sided dice as you can, three being, you know, your max, to see if you can get as many successes as possible. If you get zero successes, then you fail. If you get one success, there's a success with a consequence. If you get two successes, then you just succeed. And then if you get three, it's like a colossal success. And so you get like a boon afterwards. The way you get extra dice is if your teammates uh, help you out, give you aid in some way that can give you a die. You can also get a die if you're an expert in something. And then lastly, you can get a die if you're prepared in some way. So if you had a plan to ambush somebody, you would get another die. Now that we have the basic rule marked down for you guys, let's see if we can't get GPT to GM this game for us. So let's play a campaign of Lasers and Feelings. You will be the GM and I will be your sole player. Absolutely, I'd be delighted. Let's start with creating your character. Okay, I don't really care too much how this character goes, so I'm just gonna do it all random. So this means that we are a feelings-based intrepid envoy. Uh, let's see if we can't enter in all these inputs for GPT. So let's name our character... Zavian. Zavian Mark. I like that. Okay, so it breaks down a little bit of a character sheet here. Um, now let's create a ship, the Raptor, as a group, in this case just you, pick two strengths for the Raptor. Fast and cloaking device. Okay. Okay, only one medical pod and the captain is in it. Okay, kind of cool. So again, it summarizes my ship and says, let's start our adventure. As a GM, I will create a special adventure for Xavier and Mark. I will roll the tables and determine the threat, goal, target, and potential consequences rolling dice. Our threat is the rogue captain who wants to bond with an alien artifact in which successful will rip a hole in reality. Okay, that sucks. The adventure begins. Zevian, you are aboard the Raptor, a fast ship equipped with cloaking device. Unfortunately, the only medical pod is, a com is occupied by Captain Darcy, leaving you to fend for yourselves. You receive a distress signal by nearby space station. The message is garbled, but you make out something about a rogue captain and alien artifact. What do you do? Well, let's see who's on the ship. Okay, cool. So it looks like it's going to give me a, a whole crew. It's aware that I'm the only player, but for narrative purposes, it makes sense for me to have NPCs on the Raptor. So we have Zara, an android, uh, Dr. Idris, Talos, and Luna. So great, because I can't run a ship by myself. So this is fantastic. So how would you like to proceed with the distress signal from the space station? I am intrepid, so how about we just go check it out? Looks like the one ship has some power issues. Luna maneuvers us to a docking bay. Me, Zara and Talos prepare to board the station. Dr. Idris stays behind to monitor Captain Darcy's condition. That's kind of cool. It knows Captain Darcy needs help and leaves the doctor behind. As the airlock opens, you meet a dimly lit corridor. What do you do? Okay, I push forward and attempt to inspire the group to move quickly. It seems as though it's going to do the same thing that it typically does. I didn't give it the best prompt for how I want to run the game. 
I didn't tell it that I wanted to do dialogue for my character, so it's doing dialogue for my character. So we need to find the source of the distress signal, you say. With a voice steady and confident. Stay alert. Let's move quickly. That's all something that I would like to type in, but in order to make that happen, you have to prompt ChatGPT to let you. Not a big problem, and it does seem to be running the game. I would like to be able to roll for something feeling-based um, coming up. Seems as though Zara has detected signs of life ahead, but there's something odd about them. What do you do? Let's just say I rush towards the signs of life. So the crew is uh, stunned looking at this artifact. What do I do? I'll grab the nearest crew member and try to shake them out of their, uh, their gaze using feelings. I approach the nearest person and I roll as this is a feelings roll. Your number is two, so you want to roll over that number. I rolled a four, which is a success. The woman blinks her eyes, focusing on you. What What happened? She stammers, looking around in confusion. The other crew members start to stir, their attention drawn away from the artifact. The game does run. There are ways that we're going to improve this, and I want to talk about that the rest of this episode. Let's break the rest of this conversation down into two categories. The first thing that I want to do is talk about lasers and feelings, the game itself, as I've played it at the table with friends, and some ways that we can make our prompt best to play on our own. First is lasers and feelings as a role-playing game at the table. And if you were to ask me if this is a traditional tabletop role-playing game, I would say absolutely not. Traditional tabletop role-playing games have lots of stats, lots of rules, and they're basically strategy games, strategy combat games with role-play elements rather than role-playing games that are more of improv storytelling, which this definitely leans on the side of. And I don't mind that I enjoy it as a improv game, but there are some glaring issues with it as far as a tabletop RPG that I gotta kind of talk about. When I did play it with my friends, two things popped up consistently. One is redundancy. You only have one stat that you're better at than the other, and that applies to everything of that category. I played an interesting scientist at one point who was super lasered up, but that meant that he was also good at firing guns and basically everything that had to do with this one stat. And the people who are good at feelings were good at everything that it had to do with that stat. So what ended up happening was, uh, out of our whole group, whoever was the best at either of those things typically got to roll all of those encounters. Meaning that the optimum player size for lasers and feelings ended up feeling like it should just be two. That being said, did I still enjoy it? Yes, but it even felt like the lasers and feelings stat wasn't necessary in order to have fun. Given that a good game of lasers and feelings doesn't need that many players, honestly, I think it makes it a great candidate for playing with ChatGPT. You can play by yourself. You can have your entire party there kind of be supporting roles for you. And I think we could even write that in to our prompts. These would be my suggestions. First, Make sure to tell ChatGPT how you want to do the roleplay. If you're not somebody who wants to type up dialogue, I think that the way that ChatGPT does dialogue is probably already okay for you. But if you want to speak and make specific decisions for your character and, and write that out in paragraph form, then you should let it know that that's what you want to do and that ChatGPT should not answer for your character or make any speech for them. Just let you take care of that. Second is combat. It's always good to outline for ChatGPT how you want combat to be run. If you're okay with it just being narrative and flying by the seat of your parents, again, ChatGPT can do that. But if you'd rather inject a, a little bit more strategy into it, this is your place to do it. One way that you could do this is by creating a counter system. Whoever hits the other person three times first wins, and that can be done through aggregate successes. Say your 
firing off or you're wielding your weapon and maybe you use whichever stat is better feelings or lasers depending on how you can justify your character fights let's say the opposing character um, attacks you with three die and has one success and you having three die available too being prepared to attack and an expert with your weapon you attack and you get two successes well out of those successes, you subtract the ones that were matched up, and now you have one hit on them in your three hits to, uh, to loss or victory. Third is story crafting. You notice that we went right into the story. It took us straight to the ship, and there really wasn't going to be much to it. If you really wanted to develop a character over a little bit of time, this wouldn't do it. One thing that I would do is go ahead and tell ChatGPT before it starts its story that you want to play in a certain setting or through a certain storyline or in a, in a specific universe. Like, say you want to be on the Firefly ship. That'd be cool or maybe you want to play in the Star Trek universe. Whatever it may be, customize it to your liking. Create your own space to play in. This is your playground. And then fourth, finally, is completely change the rules. Add a bunch more stats, add whatever you want, and I'm going to be doing this when I play my Lasers and Feeling campaign. I've gotten really inspired by this YouTuber who is J Face Games. Um, he has this great series that I've recently got hooked on where he borrows things from other role playing games and kind of adapts them. So I'm going to take some of his adaptations to Lasers and Feelings, adapt those into a game that I'm interested in playing. So shout out to J Face Games. Us small creators gotta look out for one another. So if you guys don't mind, hit subscribe here first and then head over there and subscribe to his channel too. Uh, I think that his channel should blow up much faster than mine and he's been doing this a lot longer than me. And if the subscribe button is just too much commitment for you, that's fine, just make a May 10 out of the like button. And of course, leave a comment. I'm here for your questions and yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.